and welcome to Kit Guru. My name's Christina and today we are looking at the Razer Basilisk version 2. So this is aimed at serious gamers and priced at $79.99 on the website at the moment. Jumping over to aesthetics, this is a right-handed mouse, so sorry guys if you're a left-hander or like to use your mouse ambidextrous. The style of this is quite aggressive in comparison to the version 1, so it's black all the way through and it's got really nice angled buttons, so it's screaming gamer to me. The matte textured body is really nice for grip and the gloss black accents really set this off and don't worry they're not going to be fingerprint magnets because they're so small. The embossed dot textured side grips really helps with grip as you would expect. The textured wheel is really good because it's very intricate, it looks great but it also stops your finger from slipping off of it which obviously is what it's built to do. Underneath we'll look at the design here so to be honest there isn't much of one, you've got lots of information so such as DPI, serial number, barcode, compliance, safety logo, name, so much more. I feel it's a little bit crowded, to be honest with you. They could have put a little bit more effort into the design, although I know that this is kind of a running theme for Razer. 100% PTFE fee is really good to see. It wasn't on the version one, and it is on the version two. Really can see the difference between how smooth this one is in comparison to the version one because of those PTFE fee. Overall, I do love the design. It's an aggressive of gamer kind of mouse which is really nice and a little bit I would say an improvement on the version 1 because the version 1 is quite rounded and I really think that you guys are going to love this mouse. This is a mid-weight mouse, 92 grams. It really is much lighter than the original though and I can really really feel the difference here. You may love it, I don't. <laughs> I prefer a heavier mouse, that's just my preference. It feels like you're going to throw it off the side of the desk but to, to you guys you might like that. 130 millimeters by 60 millimeters by 42 millimeters so the size isn't that much different to the original but with those angle buttons it does look a tiny bit bigger grip style i tried all three different types of grip styles i tried the claw grip the fingertip grip and the palm grip I usually use the palm grip. I've got quite small hands. Felt there was a lot of support here. Even if you have bigger hands, I still feel there's a lot of room to be able to move your hand around and it is really, really comfortable. Moving over to buttons, there are 11 programmable buttons and this is included in the multifunction paddle. This can be replaced with a rubber plug that comes with the Basilisk version too. I personally found that when you don't have the paddle on, you feel like you're missing out. <laughs> I don't use mine on the version one or the version two but I keep it on there just because why not? It's free, it's there, use it. <laughs> so there is a customizable scroll wheel and you might be thinking what is a customizable scroll wheel? Well underneath the bottom of the mouse there is a resistance wheel. This allows you to tweak the resistance of the scroll wheel to be smooth or tactile as much as you want. The wheel also has tilt scroll which means that you can sort of wiggle it left and right and that will help you to be able to move up and down instead of using the side buttons. This was something that I really enjoyed on the version 1 and I'm glad they've still got it on the version 2. I use it a lot when gaming because certain games you need sort of a little bit looser scroll facility to be able to move quicker um, and I found it really really useful so thanks Razer, thanks for keeping that one with us. Moving on to the switches. So Razer have gone for optical mouse switches this time instead of mechanical switches. So just to speak you through the science behind the wonder that is optical switches, there's basically no debounce delay, which means there's not multiple signals being sent at once, which normally happens with a physical input. With a optical input, which is a laser, there's only one signal being sent at a time directly from your device to your PC. So there's very little lag there. And when you actually press the button, you feel like it's exactly doing what it should do immediately. I found this really helpful when I was playing Call of Duty. As you know, it's a fast paced first person shooter and those milliseconds really count when you're trying to shoot someone. <laughs> so I found that my score was really greatly increased by this in comparison to the version 1 and it really did make a difference to me so I'm sure you guys will enjoy it too. There is a 70 million click lifespan which I guess is down to that optical uh, switch there but it's fantastic that there's such a long lifespan on this so once you get it even though the price point I know is not absolutely cheap but it means that you will be get to keep it for a long time. The only downside is obviously being optical switches you can't really replace them 
Uh, that's the only downside really. But 70 million clicks is a lot. What I like about this mouse is that the DPI buttons are inset. This is just something a little bit random, but I found that on the version one, they are protruding quite high. So when you're switching between the right and left click or the scroll wheel or whatever you're doing, you do actually catch the up and down DPI button. Um, they're much more inset on this one and I found that I wasn't hitting them hardly ever at all. In fact, I don't think I did once. So that's fantastic, good improvement there. In the new version 2, there is the speed flex cable. I found it a little bit rougher. It didn't seem to make any difference when it comes to drag, but it was slightly rougher than the version 1. There were kinks out of the box, however they did drop out after use and there was no problem with kinking from that moment forward. So the cord's just as good as the first one, just slightly different texture. It is a 2.1 meter or 7 foot cable. There also is a lot of room for play, so you will find that you can move the mouse around without running out of cord. So when we're looking at the build quality of this mouse there's no rattle, there is no sharp edges, the buttons are really really clicky, really tactile and I really enjoy it. All of the nice different textures that you get really makes it feel premium even though it is light so I really enjoy the build quality of this and I think it goes well with the aesthetics. This mouse has the Razer Optical Plus sensor so it's 99.6% resolution accuracy which is really good to see. I did find as I stated earlier that when I was gaming with this mouse my score did improve so uh, the sensor and the switches really do help with the actual input to your PC. There are five DPI default stages ranging from 800, 1800, 4000, 9000 and 20,000. That could be seen as a positive but I'm not sure many people are going to go up to 20,000 DPI. I mean that would literally have to be moved a millimeter for it to get across your whole screen. I don't know, maybe someone will. I mean you can comment down below if you think you would use it. 650 inches per second is what we have here on the version 2. 50G acceleration which is Either you love it or you hate it. It's kind of a, a, a Marmite thing. There are lots of settings in the software that we'll go into later that you can change all that kind of stuff anyway. The intelligent functions are really useful. I found smart tracking to be really good because I've got a sort of China bought random non-branded mouse mat and it automatically calibrated to that. I didn't have to mess around with any settings. To explain why this is different to older sensors, older sensors need to be manually calibrated each time you switch to a new mouse mat surface. If they aren't tuned, this causes the lift off distance to be inconsistent. Similarly, the asymmetrical cutoff is to set its landing distance. And again, this is done automatically. Really useful so you don't have to spend all your time in the settings. Another intelligent function which is really interesting is motion sync. This basically means that the signal is syncing to the exact intervals your PC extracts information. Now, I, like I say, I did find my KD was improved on Call of Duty, but could it be placebo? Could it be marketing getting into my mind and making me think I'm a better player? It could be. There's no way that I can test this in real life. Um, but you guys might find it improves your game too. If it does, make sure you leave a comment and let us know. Razer Synapse Free is the software that you'll need for this mouse. It's got five onboard memory profiles. Hypershift technology, this doubles the number of customizable controls. All your settings can be saved in the cloud storage, so no matter where you go, you can just sign into the Razer Central and away you go. When you open Synapse, you'll see all your devices if you have other Razer products attached to your computer. Obviously, we're talking about the Razer Basilisk version 2 today, so we'll click onto that one. Here you can see the standard button profiles. You can access onboard profiles, enable hypershift at the bottom here, in the, if we click on a button, you can see the quick menu appear along the left hand side. Here you can remap your keys to your mouse and keyboard, create macros, switch lighting and also access other parts of the software. Make sure though, when you change anything in these tabs, that you always press save before exiting or changing to another tab. Because I found that I didn't save and I lost all my uh, settings, which was quite frustrating. So make sure you save every time. 
In the Performance tab, we can change the DPI settings. As previously mentioned, there are five native settings. You can change this to less or to any DPI variant that you prefer. So you can just have two options to switch between rather than five, for instance. You can also see the polling rate here and a handy shortcut to the Windows mouse properties. The Lighting tab is pretty self-explanatory, but here you can change brightness, switch off when idle or display is turned off, access quick effects and Chroma Studio for those more advanced customizations. Chroma Studio is really advanced, by the way, <laughs> and hugely customizable. Here you can see my setup. It took me a while, I'm not gonna lie, to decide what I wanted here. Um, there are so many options. The tutorial is great and really helps you out if you're not sure what all of these options and settings mean. So don't get too overwhelmed. Razor, I've got you covered here. Calibration takes us to the smart tracking, which I mentioned earlier. You can customize the tracking distance to your liking and you can also enable the asymmetric cutoff if you wish. I don't think you really need the manual calibration section, which is here, but you may find that there is a surface that may not calibrate as you wish, and you may want to tweak your surfaces a little bit differently to what Razer have, and here you can do that. I found that this is a nice, easy, intuitive bit of software, really little helpful question marks that are placed all over the software if you don't know what something means, and I think that you guys are gonna get on perfectly with the software. Now, this is the exciting bit for a little magpie like me. There are two Razer Chroma RGBs on its scroll wheel and the logo. 16.8 million colors. So you know I was saying that this is kind of in depth when it comes to customization. That is why. The RGBs are really bright, really satisfying to someone like myself that loves all the glitz and glam and crazy RGB features that you can get with Chroma. But obviously you can turn them off as well. You can reduce the brightness. There's so many options. I'm sure you'll find something to suit you. Comparison wise to the version one, here's a few things that are a little bit different. So eight programmable buttons on the version one, version two has 11. 16K DPI on the version one, 20K on the new version two. Mechanical Omrons, 50 million click lifespan on the version one. Optical switches on the version two with 70 million click lifespan. Version one was 107 grams, the new is 92. This does feel much lighter than it actually is in comparison to the version one as well. Standard braided cable on the version one and a speed flex design on version two. The standard feet on the version one and this time we've got the 100% PTFE feet which is really useful when it comes to gliding around your mouse mat. No onboard memory on the version one. On version two, you do have five onboard memory profiles. The original design was a lot smoother, a lot rounder. The new version two is really much more aggressive, much more gamer. Pros and cons, let's jump in. So first of all, it's a great sensor technology that they've brought in with the new intelligence functions. I found that it helped me in game. It again may be a placebo effect, but it did help. It's really tactile. I love all the different types of textures and all the detail they've put into everything, even down to the mouse wheel. The unique selling point for me is the scroll wheel resistance adjuster. That is fantastic. It stops you having to overshoot in certain games and it's it's totally customizable. The inset DPI buttons is a big improvement I feel from a user perspective because I did used to hit the up and down DPI buttons by accident when using the scroll wheel. Cons, I don't like light mice. You may be like screaming at me like light mice is the way to go and I know they are really popular at the moment but I really do prefer the version one in terms of the weight and how it feels. Price wise, $79.99. It's not an exact bank breaker but it is top end. I feel that you get a lot of technology from this actual mouse and it is really worth the price bracket. In conclusion, I love this mouse. I loved the version one and I didn't think there could be much that was improved. The specs are phenomenal and I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. If you guys are going to be getting yourself a Razer Basilisk version 2, make sure you drop a comment below, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell. Check out our merchandise as well because there's something there for everybody and we do have a website with daily tech news so make sure you check that one out as well. My name's Christina, this is Kit Guru and I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.